<coughs> Woo! <laughs> hey guys, it's your pal Steve here. Um, you know, it's been a bit. It's been a minute. It's been a Hollywood minute. Guys, I want to talk to you a little bit about, um... <coughs> Let me just say that back in the old source-fed nerd days, there used to be a place where when a new movie or a new TV show that we really love or a new really cool trailer popped up, there was a place for us to easily kind of just like talk about things and discuss things with the audience and with our coworkers and friends, and we don't really have that anymore. But here's the deal, guys. I'm sick of not posting things about movies that I just saw and TV shows that I just saw and, uh, you know, trailers and trailer reactions and stuff so uh, I partnered with a really cool app called Stardust and um, I love this app I actually my first experience with Stardust was at Fantastic Fest this year they were a featured um, uh, uh, sponsor of Fantastic Fest so it's an app where you can uh, post your reactions to movies and TV shows and trailers. So it's specifically like a social media network just for movie fans and TV fans and trailer fans. You can watch people reacting to movies. A lot of your favorite YouTubers and social media boys and girls are on there, like Clark Wolf, and I know Sam Basher is on there as well. <laughs> Anyway, a lot of cool people, a lot of cool people on the app, including my, uh, myself. And I just joined this thing, and now I'm kind of like in it. And it's very easy to just tag me in your Stardust reactions, or tag me um, if you want to make your own reactions to my videos. Just use an app. Steve Zaragoza, that's my name on the app. And I'm a follow back girl. I will follow you back on this app. I'm gonna start doing a show here on my channel where I will talk about latest movies and TV shows and such, and then I'll feature reactions from you guys using the Stardust app in the video. So you guys can kind of be, it's kind of like movie club again. Remember movie club? Hang on. <laughs> And the coolest thing about the Stardust app is, is that it's all video based. All of the like, the stuff you see is just like their short little 30 second clips of people talking about movies. Sometimes there's spoilers, sometimes there's no spoilers. They're very clearly marked. And um, you guys can kind of get in on the discussion. There's like a comment area to kind of comment on each video. And, and then there's a way to contribute to someone's reactions to a movie, TV show, <clears throat> or trailer by um, uploading your own video review and saying like, well, here's what I thought. And here's my thing about this. So once I start doing my show uh, where I'll review movies and such, this is kind of what it will look like when you guys send me your responses and how I'll respond to them. These are kind of like community, excuse me. I love that we find out that Ray is just a normal girl who happened to have the force. Um, I low key wish that she had took Kylo's hand and been in second. It would have made a great dynamic for them two because they have great chemistry. Yeah, I, you know, I, seeing Ray and Kylo kind of um, almost join up was such a cool idea. And I was like, uh, I was thinking, man, if Star Wars went this direction, cause it's interesting, it, you know, Kylo, Kylo's idea is that like, he wants to kind of re put, hit the reset button on, on what the Jedi order is and what the Jedi do and, and what it would be. And it, it's interesting because, you know, the old, basically the old Jedi is kind of are done. And um, after this one, there really are no more old Jedi's that we know of. There's only new Jedi's. So it is kind of interesting to think about what a new Jedi Order ran by or run by Kylo and Rey would be like. Hmm. Home from the Last Jedi and I really enjoyed it. There's a few things I loved and then a few things. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's exactly how I felt coming out of the movie. I, I loved a lot about it, but so much of it made me uncomfortable and I I just, I don't know if it's because, I, no, because I went into this movie expecting something as good as The Force Awakens, which I was blown away by and loved very much. You know, I loved it. It was an entertaining movie and this one just kind of like, man, so much really bummed me out. And so when I came out, I was like, what happened? I didn't go into that movie wanting to be upset. I didn't go into that movie wanting to be bummed out. 
You know what I mean? It just happens. Leia using the Force? Cool. Yoda cameo. Cool, but looked really bad as a puppet. I liked Leia using the Force. I know that there was, there, I could hear some people chuckling in the theater when it, when it happened in our, in our showing. They were also cheering. There was actually louder cheering than chuckling, which was a good sign. I don't know, there's a lot of mixed responses to that moment. A lot of people are like, this isn't a Marvel movie. We knew Leia was Force sensitive in Return of the Jedi. That's, that's canonical, damn it. Yoda puppet was weird. The Yoda puppet looked like, apparently it, it, excuse me, apparently it was made using molds from the original uh, puppet, the original Yoda puppet back in The Empire Strikes Back. Um, and Frank Oz even did the voice and, and uh, puppetry, which is really, really cool. But uh, something was up with that mouth. To me, it's like, I don't know, man. I, I'm a weird person when it comes to Muppets and puppets and stuff. And, uh, you know, Akbar looks a little, or not Akbar, Akbar looks fine. Nine Nub looks a little weird to me. The scene was very, um, it was sweet, you know, and, and nice to see Luke and Yoda together again after so long. But, um, yeah, the puppet kind of bummed me out a little bit. But great that it's a puppet. I give them all the props because they used a fucking puppet, for God's sakes. One of my favorite things in The Last Jedi was this connection that was set up between Kylo and Rey. The connection between Kylo and Rey was great. The uh, the kind of like force FaceTime, the force Skyping that they were doing uh, was really cool. I like that. It's an interesting new uh, device. And it's an interesting new way to get these characters to kind of communicate with each other. We saw slight versions of this type of communication in Jedi a little bit. I have seen The Last Jedi twice now, and um, I think this might be my favorite Star Wars movie. That's crazy. I've heard people say that this is their favorite Star Wars movie. That's awesome. I mean, it just means that there's a whole bunch of different opinions out there. Uh, I've only seen it once. I do plan on seeing it again, and hopefully a second viewing does a little something for my, um, my bummed outness. But, uh, but yeah, I love it. I love that people, it's very divisive. It really is. Like, especially on my Twitter feed, there's a lot of uh, back and forth uh, between people who think they're right about their opinions. But really, the truth is, is no one's actually right. You know, if you enjoy the movie, that's awesome. If you didn't, whatever, man. There's more coming. It's so much more. Luke died. <laughs> yeah, that bummed me out real bad that Luke died. What the fuck? Right when you're like, especially when he tells Kylo in the in this showdown or whatever you want to call it, that I'll be seeing you or something. I'll see you around. I'll see you again. Um, I don't know. Maybe he knew. Maybe he didn't know it was going to kill him. Maybe Luke didn't know. I don't know. That's a weird thing to, to write your character to say if they're... Um, you know, and then not make it clear that they understood that that was gonna kind of kill them or something. I don't know. Did he understand that the crazy, insane astral projection Jedi Force thing, uh, did did Luke know it would kill him? Did he, did he know? I don't know, let's talk about that because that's kind of interesting. I didn't cry that Luke died because it, it was so, it was kind of, I, I wasn't sure what happened, honestly. And I had to think about it a bit because his cloak just kind of floats off into the wind, and I'm like, uh, I'm thinking, ooh, where did he astral project next? But then I remembered Yoda's clothes kind of like faded off, and so did Obi-Wan's in A New Hope. They fell fell to the ground. So, um, yeah, it took me a second. So I didn't really have a chance to be sad. I was kind of disappointed, actually, because I wanted to see Luke really fucking saber to saber Kylo Ren, man. I want to see that shit. The fight where Kylo Ren and, um, uh... Ray teamed up. Oh, that was awesome. Oh yeah, man. Ray and Kylo fighting those guards, Precatorian, pre 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 pro Prohibition era guards, whatever the fuck they're called, pro Protalitarian, whatever the fuck those guards are called. Uh, that was so rad, man. But who were they? And where are the Knights of Ren? I guess, I don't know. Snoke probably killed them because there can only be a master and an apprentice or whatever, so I don't know. But, uh, but Snoke did call Kylo the uh, master of the Knights of Ren, so I don't know. But that fight scene was... The fight scene in that room, that entire scene was probably my favorite part of the entire movie. I really, really, really love that scene. It just showcased how how fucking great 
those actors are and just how much of a how how much of a better grip on lightsaber battles they have in this new era of Star Wars movies whereas you watch the prequel lightsaber fights and it's just like soulless computer animated garbage that doesn't matter at all I got to talk about this the biggest crowd pleasing holy shit moment of the movie was definitely when Kylo and Rey were uh, confronted by Snoke and Kylo turned on the lightsaber right it went right through Snoke and split him in half yeah i love it i actually i'm in the i'm in this on the side of loving the fact that they just fucking killed Snoke and it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter who he is really i mean I, it would be nice to find out who he is because they made such a big deal out of it in the force awakens um, and it would be kind of an oversight. But, you know, I was reading a thing that where Ryan Johnson said he was writing um, the uh, the Last Jedi while J.J. was still shooting The Force Awakens. So, I don't know. You take that for what you will, you know? Maybe he didn't know what they were going to do with Snoke and he just fucking went for it. Um, but I love it. I love that they were just like, the same thing with Ray's parents. They're just like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter. Who cares? And they just, they, I mean, killing Snoke like that was great, man. The Jedi loves slicing bad guys in half. Plain and simple, Ryan Johnson made the ballsiest, riskiest Star Wars film in the entire franchise, the entire saga. I have also heard people use the word ballsy a lot in referencing Ryan Johnson's version of Star Wars. And I think it's, it's, uh, I, yeah, I agree. It's very ballsy. He, he kind of did a lot of things and 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 took a lot of turns that no one would would really have expected or been able to predict and uh yeah man he really did some pretty interesting stuff with the story uh had any would anyone else have gone there i don't know i mean ryan johnson's fantastic i love looper i love the stuff he did on breaking bad and um he's a, he's a great guy too i got to meet him and he's a genuine nerd that loves star wars and um you know, we're kind of seeing the age of Star Wars fans making Star Wars movies. And um, it's interesting to see what everyone's doing with them. But yeah, the, I, I would say, I would agree that it's ballsy. It is not my favorite Star Wars movie, but I do really like it. There was a lot of fun to be had. There was some epicness. There was a lot of great character moments. Um, but there was about 20 minutes that felt really dull and just not important yeah the canto bite or whatever the fuck that planet's because a casino planet oh man cut it out cut all that shit out you know what i mean who needs it what 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 happens there let's see i don't know this is too much to talk about <laughs> there's not enough time and then the whole throne scene with snoke wow they killed snoke they killed snoke they fucking killed him man he's gone he's done for what will happen will we learn more about snoke do we care anymore? The story's going in an interesting direction. We've got some new Force-sensitive kiddos in the world, and, um... I saw a thing that said Snoke is Maybe Snoke might not be dead, the fans are thinking. Oh! Fans are thinking Snoke might not even be dead. The fans are thinking we might still find out who Ray's parents actually are. Well, you know, the thing is, is, uh, Darth Maul became, like, a spider robot. In the Clone Wars cartoons. Is that with Snow instead? Well, no, I mean, why not? If they did it in the cartoons and people love it. People love that Darth Maul came back. Darth Maul was a badass character. Probably one of the coolest things that came out of the prequels was Darth Maul. If I had to say anything good about the prequels, which I don't have much to say, uh, other than the fantastic score by John Williams, uh, who always delivers, unless you're listening to the... Uh, uh, Heartbeep soundtrack. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I'm interested to see what they do. I mean, if they don't, if they literally never bring Snoke back, fuck yeah, man, go for it. If they bring him back in some way where they tell the story of, you know, uh, Ben, uh, you know, Ben Solo and, and, uh, and find out what his journey was from Luke's school to the Knights of Ren to Snoke, then cool, that'd be cool, but if not, I'm fine with that too, you know? We don't need a backstory for everything, and um, you know, we don't need uh, the origins of every fucking character in every Star Wars movie, and um, that's my two cents about it. <laughs> so basically you just like, after you watch a movie or a trailer or something and you really wanna nerd out about it, 
which I often do, um, you just like open the app and record your little thing and go like, this is what I thought of it. And you can rate it. There's like, you know, poster art you can add to it. And then on your profile, you can put all your favorite movies and stuff. And all you gotta do is get the Stardust app. All the info's in the description. So if you click on that link, that's like my specific link and it helps me out. It's gonna be a lot of fun and I'd love for you guys to be a part of it. It's more personal because we get to see each other. We get to look at each other in the eyes and say, you're wrong about this movie. Or yes, I agree with you, sir. So guys, get the app, sign up, follow Follow me, I'll follow you back, and let's get to talking about movies. Now, you might be asking yourself, Steve, what movie are we about to talk about? Well, because I see every movie that comes out ever, I'm seeing Jumanji, the new Jumanji movie starring The Rock and Jack Black and Karen Gillan. So guys, send in your reviews for Jumanji if you're seeing it. Tag me in the review on the app, and let's get to, to the jungle, baby. Let's talk about the jungle... Let's get into that jungle, baby. Let's jump into the jungle. Let's, ha welcome to the, tag me in those videos and let's talk about the movie. Eee.